everybody, E here. Welcome back to another book review. But before we get started with that, I want to wish everyone a happy Women in Horror Month. This will be my, I believe, my second review that goes up on the channel, second or third that goes up on the channel um, in the month of February, which is, of course, Women in Horror Month. Uh, we talked about Helen Phillips' The Need last time. This time, we are talking about Anaya Allborn's Pop C. Before we get... I just keep, I keep slapping, slap, slap. Promise I ain't as punchy as I seem. But before we get going here with this review is, I did it again! Before we get done, not done. No, before we get started with this review, let's go to Ebert for the blurb reading. Ebert! With nothing but the clothes on his back and something horrific snapping at his heels, Jack Winter fled his rural Georgia home when he was still just a boy. Watching the world he knew vanish in a trucker's rearview mirror, he thought he was leaving an unspeakable nightmare behind forever. But years later, the bright new future he's built suddenly turns pitch black as something fiendishly familiar looms dead ahead. When Jack, his wife Amy, and their two small children survive a violent car crash, it seems like a miracle. But Jack knows what he saw on the road that night and it wasn't divine intervention. The profound evil from his past won't let them die, at least not quickly. It's back, and it's hungry, ready to make Jack pay for running, to work its malignant magic on his angelic youngest daughter, and to whisper a chilling promise, I've always been here, and I'll never leave. Country comfort is no match for spine-tingling southern gothic suspense in Anya Allborn's tale of an ordinary man with a demon on his back. Seed plants its page-turning tear deep in your soul and lets it grow wild. Okay, so now that we know what Anya Allborn's Seed is about, let's talk about the book right up front. I'm kind of indifferent about this book. I've said this several times over the course of my reviewing career over the course of this channel. Books that make me feel indifferent, while I will rate them higher because there's nothing technically wrong with them, I actually don't like reading them. It's the only type of read that I truly, truly dislike reading. I will give this book three stars, but it, I, it's, it's white bread. It's just plain white bread, no jam, jelly, no, nothing. It's just very, very basic. Uh, it's the same problem I have with a lot of uh, modern horror. It's just very basic. I did not hate the book, dislike the book. Uh, this is the, the conundrum I run into when I have a book that I want to give one star because I absolutely have no feelings for it whatsoever. Maybe it should be a two star because it's just okay but I was able to finish it, so I must have liked it. There's a bunch of confusion. If you guys know that confusion, if you guys feel that confusion yourselves when reading a book that's just meh, let me know down there in the doobly-doo. What do we rate something that we feel meh about? Should we rate it one because it had it pulled absolutely no emotion out of us? Do we rate it, uh, you know, three stars because it's a middle-of-the-road experience? I don't know. Uh, do you rate it five because you just want the escape and I don't care as long as the book isn't terrible? Ah! Th this, <laughs> this book is one of those perfect examples of how someone wanted to take an overused trope and try and make it their own. Where this book does shine is in the very last couple of chapters. The ending's fantastic. Uh, it is a great horror ending. The rest of the book is kind of just going through the, the motion. So I, I think that's another reason why I'm going to give it three stars is because of the ending. I think that kind of bumps it up just one little inch, centimeter, millimeter, I don't know, above above two stars. Uh, the, the ending was enjoyable. I was like, oh damn, she went there. Um, and there's one scene in particular at the end with the tree. Um, that part, that, that part got me, I, I, I will say, because I was not expecting it. Uh, there's certain, like, a code of conduct that uh, mainstream horror authors don't 
that you know, lines that they don't cross all the time. King does it all the time. Um, but there, there's a certain unwritten rule with uh, mainstream horror authors that you don't do certain things. And this book does it. So um, I, I, can't rem I can't recall. I remember I've, I followed uh, Allborn's career since way back uh, when she first started. I remember seeing Seed pop up. Am I wrong in remembering that this book was an indie book and then it became a, a, a traditionally published book? Or was it, Auburn was a indie author that became a trad pub author? I don't know. She made it a trad pub the whole time, but I'm not sure. That has no bearing on whether or not the book is good. I'm just trying to remember if that was the case. So yeah, I'm going to give this three stars. This review is kind of all over the place simply because I just don't know what to say about the book. And I wanted to review it. I wanted to give you something for it. And I'm sure there's going to be plenty of you um, that have your own feelings about the book. Because there's been a lot of you, a lot of you, that have been recommending me Allborn's work. I've just never been able to get into it. It's basic writing with basic happenings, but if her endings are this good, maybe she's worth looking into more? I don't know. Let me know your opinion down there in the doobly-doo. Um, but have you read Seed also? If you have, uh, let me know if you liked it, if you hated it. If you liked it, let me know why you liked it. If you hated it, let me know why you hated it. If you're like me and you're indifferent, just say, meh. Just leave meh. Just spam meh down there in the comments. But until next time, I have been me. You have been you. This has been another book review. Happy Women in Horror Month. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Boy, the people who like to sit there and like, you know, repeat my, my outro with me going to be fucked up this time. <laughs>